Hey there, everybody. My name is Kate Hendricks. I am the Senior Technical and Gameplay Designer on ARK Survival Evolved and on the Scorched Earth Expansion Pack. And we are here today to show you all the cool new stuff that is available in Scorched Earth. We've got a whole bunch of new weapons, a whole bunch of new items, a bunch of new creatures to tame and to fight with and to... You can even take these little dudes over here, these Jerboas, and shove them on your shoulder and have them ride around with you. We've got vultures that you can use for collecting meat and other things from uh, corpses. We've got giant rock golems that you can see up on the cliff face there that are amazing siege engines and just tanky monsters. We've got all sorts of new flying wyverns that you can, through a very difficult process, tame and make your own. We've got a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff to show off here, so we should probably just get started with it and head off in this direction to the little house that we have built over here for you. <clears throat> you can see on the outside here, we have these really, really pretty flags. These flags are the new boss flag that you get for defeating the Manticore boss. He is the new boss that comes with Scorched Earth if you manage to defeat all of the caves get the artifacts from inside, and conquer the boss. We've got his head mounted on the wall right here. This is also a trophy that you can get from defeating him. Um, we actually created kind of a bunch of different kinds of trophies that are available to players who defeat the Manticore, not just these like cosmetic items, but also a number of skins that you can get for helmets and shields. Um, there are a number of new creatures that I mentioned. Um, we've got these little jug bugs here. These are some of the cool new kind of helpful creatures that exist in the deserts. Um, these ones in particular are the water jug bugs. You can just go up to them and you can click on the E button and it allows you to drink the water inside of them. So if you're out in the desert and you see one and he's flying around, you don't even have to own him. You just go up, press the E button and you can fill your water up on him. Um, it is one of many ways that we have kind of put together in order to help players to survive better in the desert environment. The red ones, oil jug bugs, they happen to contain oil in their big butts. It is a very, very efficient source of oil, allows you to kind of collect it without having to uh, set up yourself on one of the large oil nodes that can be a little bit difficult to find and even more difficult to try and defend. Your little guy is going to want to get out of our way here. Let's move you. This here is the whip. The whip is actually really nice because you can use it to herd these guys. All dinosaurs respond to the whip. It doesn't hurt them. It just allows you to move them in a direction and kind of hurt your creatures. It's one of the cool things that the whip does. So we're going to take you... Um, over this way, actually, because I believe all of the creatures that I want to show off are in this direction. Um, here we have the Lamantria. It is a large moth-like creature. They are flyers, and they have this really cool special ability that allows them to drop this huge bomb of kind of poison gas when you, you have them attack. This poison gas causes a massive slow and uh, debilitates anything that's caught in the area of effect. It is super effective during sieges, um, during other kinds of fights like that to debilitate and weaken down your enemies. Uh, if you want to follow me over here, you are welcome to stay on. Oh, okay, nope, that's cool too. <laughs> um, we have some other creatures. These are the mantises. So the mantis is kind of a really interesting creature. They are very, very fragile, very low health, but uh, they have these, you can see that they have weapons equipped on them, yeah. Um, you can equip pretty much any weapon that a normal player could equip on these guys, and using them, attacking with them, all that kind of stuff, it works exactly like you would expect it would work with a player. Um, if you cut down trees with the guys who's at, who have axes, the axes give you the normal bonuses to harvesting wood, that kind of stuff. You can equip swords, you can equip pikes, you can equip all sorts of things in these guys' hands. And they actually get the stats of the weapons that you equip. It's, it makes these guys very, very, very deadly. They're incredibly powerful. 
um, but they are also very, very fragile, so if you're going into battle with one of them, that leap there is exactly how you can get in or out of combat without dying. Um, the leap is very, very devastating. It lunges you in, but if you go into combat and you're not prepared, you can end up cut down very quickly by your opponents. The uh, thorny dragons over here, these guys are one of my favorite. Uh, they function just like the beaver does. Uh, the beaver, if you're not familiar, uh, in the main game has kind of a like forge built into its saddle. So you can access their inventory and treat them exactly like you would a normal smithy. They have reduced weight when they are carrying wood, stone, and other basic crafting materials. But these guys have a very, very special attack. When you right-click, they shoot out a hail of spines that induce a large amount of torpor on your enemies. Good for knocking people unconscious, knocking enemies unconscious, taming new creatures. They are incredibly versatile and make for a fantastic kind of like mid-range mount. So over here we have the Morelatops. The Morelatops are kind of our camels of the desert. They are a relatively slow and methodical creature. They're durable, but the most interesting thing about them, honestly, is that you can store water in them and you can safely store water in them. Uh, most water storage options that you have in the desert here leak. They slowly lose water over time or they are completely static. You can't bring them anywhere. The Morella Tops allows you to kind of break that rule by storing water in its back, and they will never leak water. You can go up to them, and you can simply choose an option from the um, from the use menu to fill water containers. You can drink water directly from them. You can do a whole bunch of different things with the water that you store inside of them. And that makes them pretty much essential for any travel across the desert because of how difficult it is to do so and retain your water levels. So here we have the rock elementals. These guys are, as I mentioned before, these huge, tanky, monstrous creatures. They are incredibly slow, incredibly methodical, but they have a lot of siege potential. Like, they can deal damage to a lot of different uh, types of structures, and their right-click allows them to grab and hurl these giant boulders that deal tons of damage, they smash up walls, they're really, really, really cool. They also have a really, really neat ability. Um, if you just aim at them and hold down the E button, there's an option to disguise as rock. You can click that disguise as rock button, and after a few seconds, the golem will disguise itself as a rock. It's just like a normal rock. Nobody can tell the difference until they get close to it or if they happen to own it. And then while they're in rock form, you can go up to them whenever you'd like and just press E and they will emerge from rock mode, ready for battle. So you can use these for planning ambushes, for catching people unweary. And you can also have these guys kind of spring up on you in the wild because that is how you will find them, is disguised as rocks. And they will pop out and immediately attack you. They are very, very scary and can only be knocked out by siege class weaponry, which is explosives or explicit siege weapons like cannons or uh, catapult stones, those kinds of things. Farther along the ridge, we have kind of the keystone of Scorched Earth. These guys here are the Wyverns. They come in three different flavors, fire, electricity, and acid. They all have their own unique breath weapons that they use, just as you would kind of expect from a dragon, or Wyvern in this case. Um, they are Incredibly powerful creatures, very, very difficult to tame. They all have their own unique kind of skins. They've got their own unique powers. You can use right-click to fire their breath weapon if you want to see how that works. The lightning wyverns obviously shoot a huge bolt of lightning. The poison wyverns 
shoot a massive ball of acid that explodes into a huge cloud of just death. Um, and the fire wyverns, as, as you would expect, breathe fire all over everything. All of these different attacks that they have kind of have different properties. The poison deals damage over time. It uh, deals its own like type of damage. It's a poison damage that it deals, so it can't be reduced by armor or uh, by normal things that would reduce the damage that you take from different sources. It's the same for all of the wyverns. The electric and fire both deal electric and fire type damage. Um, it's kind of an introduction to elemental type damages and none of them are reduced by armor or anything like that. So it makes them exceptionally strong. So one of the great thing about having flyers is that you can see kind of everything that's going on around you. Um, we've got a T-Rex down here who is currently fighting with one of the Paraceratheriums. Um, the desert dunes are the scariest place on scorched earth. Uh, it is completely inhospitable out here. Everything wants to kill you. Everything is lethal. The pl you, you don't want to get caught out here unless you have tons of water, tons of powerful creatures to back you up. Like it, it's, it, it's really bad news if you get caught out here alone. There are a number of oasises um, and little kind of safe spots out in the desert, but not enough that you want to be roaming it without knowing what you're doing and where you're going. Well, thank you very much for sitting down and talking with me about Scorched Earth. Uh, it is available now on PC, on the Steam Store. It's 20 bucks. There's a ton of new content here. All sorts of new creatures, new caves, a bunch of beautiful environments to explore. Uh, you know what? We put a huge amount of passion, a huge amount of just like love into this. It's super polished. You will absolutely love it if you just sit down and play it. Um, it's also available on Xbox currently on the Microsoft Store. Just pop on over, pick up. Uh, again, th thank you so much for sitting down and running through all this content with me. It was a ton of fun, and I look forward to seeing kind of how Scorched Earth and the rest of the game develop.